So Steve, uh, really enjoyed the class as late with the students. It was a really exceptional session. I, I love their enthusiasm. They have great backgrounds. And, uh, you know, what did you take? What was your takeaway from the class? Yeah, I was. Uh, I agree with you, Wayne. They're, they're really a great group of folks that we have. And I love how engaged they are with the, with the topic and how much they're engaged with each other. And I, it's been a lot of fun uh, getting them to know each other. Even though we're in the Zoom land environment, they seem to have a nice energy uh, with them. So it's a lot of fun. Yeah. Okay. I know we talked a, a bit about framing questions last night. And that was kind of your focus. Can you kind of give me an overview of what, what we mean by that? Yeah, you know, it, I think when you're doing agile work, Wayne, uh, you save yourself a lot of time when you have a, lo a lot more clarity at the front end of a project and, and that uh, you need to build uh, opt-in and buy-in by other people who are going to be involved in order to, to do that. And one way to do that, I think, is to uh, really spend some time framing the question around the problem that you're trying to solve. So we spent a lot of time last night figuring out how to do that. And there's some simple steps to it, I think. First of all, have that safe space where people can talk openly about what's on their mind and have that uh, transparency. Uh, and then uh, be able to uh, dig into what are the things that are, that are uh, most passionate for people in order to get into this project that they're going to be doing together. What are the, some of the things that they need? Get all of that information, gather it together, synthesize it, and then come down and distill it into what we call a framing question to really clarify the purpose and intention. And that builds energy towards people then giving their best work to it. And it also gives you a chance to uh, let other people in the organization know uh, what, what, um, what you're all about and what the project is going to try to accomplish in the end. So this idea of framing the right question is so critically important. It takes a little while at the front end to get it, but once you've got it, I think it makes the rest of the agile process go a lot quicker. I think you were saying with your nonprofit organization, you had a, basically six iterations over a ser series of weeks to get the right framing question. Yeah. Right. Because you want to have a framing question that excites people. It, it, there's no known answer. It, it generates a lot of ideas, which you can kind of work through to make sense, you know, for your organization. Yeah. And I guess there's two types of framing question. You know, if there's a, uh, it came up in our class last night about what about if, if there's so many um, divergent voices in the in the issue how do you come up with a framing question that, that fits everybody yep. and i think the the answer to that is well you you make it you make your framing question more of an invitation to join a conversation mm -hmm. than maybe specifically yep. aligned around a particular project so i think there are ways you can use framing questions whether you have a uh, unity uh, with the intention of for the agile project or if there's a lot of diversity around it how do you bring everybody to the table to have a meaningful conversation so iterating uh use of the framing question technique, I think, is important. Uh, and you might have to do several iterations to get it where you really need it to be. Yeah. And as you always say, and Peter Block says, all, all transformation is linguistic. And I think how you state a question is really important. And I like how the book talks about how might I, how might we, that, that just saying as simple as those two, three words, there's no obvious answer versus yeah. typical questions, which, we, you know, we kind of give a hint of, in terms of what we're looking for but but how how might i opens up a plethora of possibilities and that we can really focus and drill down and get more information around yeah and again it's more of that invitation to join yep rather than a judgment about a particular path that you want to be on so use of the word can and should uh, substitute yep. the, uh, those two words in your uh, in your frame uh, and use the word might and it just opens up yep. a whole new path of thinking about the problem yeah and just in closing, I think one of our students brought up an Einstein quote, something about if I had an hour to solve a problem, I would stand, spend 55 minutes asking questions. Yes. Uh, and the five minutes coming up solution. And it makes sense. You know, typically we rush to the solution when in fact we don't really have all the questions we need answered. As yeah, part of well, that. I think we're prone to that. And, you know, the way that we uh, run our organizations in the American uh, workforce is very much solution oriented quick quickly to get to a solution and if we could just slow down a little bit I think yep. we can speed up and make the, our make our solutions more sustainable if we're more thoughtful and spend a little bit more time at the front end mm -hmm. really clarifying and understanding listening intently and um, yeah I think I think those are the uh, challenges too of doing that because it does take a bit longer at the front to get it get some traction but once you have it I think you move much faster yep good Another great class, and I look forward to uh, next week and see what happens then.
Great. See you there. All right.